This is Mythbusters Regional Anesthesia Edition. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a common belief that is pervasive and perhaps not so evidence-based. Namely, never use epinephrine-containing solutions for digital blocks. Most medical students are taught at some point that local anesthetic solutions containing epinephrine shouldn't be injected at or near the fingers and toes because digital arteries are end arteries and vasospasm will cause ischemia and infarction. This advice is repeated in authoritative texts and online resources and has generally been accepted as dogma. There's no doubt that if this was the result of a digital block gone wrong, this would represent a catastrophic complication of a simple anesthetic procedure. So if that's the conventional wisdom, then are there any potential advantages or upsides to using epinephrine in local anesthetics when performing digital blocks? Well, we know that epinephrine truncates the peak plasma concentrations of many local anesthetics. This landmark paper from 1977 demonstrated a 30-50% to reduction for bupivacaine and lidocaine. And while this is important for other sites and volumes of administration, it's hard to imagine that the risk for last is at all an issue for digital blocks. It turns out there are some reasons that hand and foot surgeons offer when considering the use of epinephrine. There are data to support a decreased need for mechanical finger tourniquets, decreased local anesthetic requirement, improved hemostasis, and a prolonged duration of lidocaine anesthesia. Now, to me, I could take or leave any of those. I mean, the fact that I'm decreasing my local anesthetic volume in a finger block by using epinephrine is not a game changer. So, let's look at this from another perspective. Does it actually cause injury? If epinephrine caused vasospasm to the extent that ischemia resulted, you'd expect the tissue to be hypoxic. The data doesn't seem to support that, though. For example, in this study, patients receiving digital blocks with 2% lidocaine and 1 in 80,000 epinephrine showed no reduction in fingertip partial pressure of oxygen or oxygen saturation. The measurement was done 15 minutes after the injection, which is more than enough time for maximal vasoconstriction. Patients in this study received digital blocks using 2% lidocaine with 1 in 100,000 epinephrine, and pulse wave Doppler flow imaging of digital arteries was used to quantify the flow. Arterial flow did decrease in all subjects, but returned to normal within 60 to 90 minutes, and that, along with the absence of any complication, was enough for these authors to conclude that it was a safe practice. Well, is it possible that concentration plays a role in injury? Maybe the best evidence against this are from cases like this, where patients accidentally inject their hands and fingers with epinephrine auto-injectors or EpiPens. 300 mics of epinephrine in one place is a lot. There are about half a dozen reported cases like this one, and many are treated with topical agents recovering completely like this patient. In fact, in a wide range of clinical concentrations of epinephrine, it doesn't seem to matter. Here we see a rabbit belly used to measure transmittance of light through a blanched area of skin. You can see that 1 in 100,000 results in the same cutaneous effect as 1 in 800,000, so there's no real advantage to diluting your epi within this range if your goal is to protect the fingers. Okay, so let's dig back a bit further into this mystery. It turns out that if you look through PubMed all the way back to 1889, there are in fact 21 cases of digital gangrene following injection of local anesthetic with epinephrine. Okay, so that's not really reassuring. On the other hand, there are 27 cases of gangrene when digital blocks were done with local anesthetic alone. Okay, so we have 48 cases. Now, 42 of these occurred prior to 1950. Why is that important? It has to do with procaine. Back in those days, that was the local anesthetic du jour. The original worked well. It did have a bad habit of degrading in the presence of light over time to para-aminobenzoic acid, or PABA. The older the bottle got, the worse the hydrolysis, with some even testing out at the pH of less than 1.0. And since the FDA didn't mandate expiry dates until the 1970s, it's likely that the outdated acidic procaine was the culprit in many, if not the vast majority of these cases. But wait, you say, what about those six cases that occurred later on? What was the cause there? Well, it turns out that injecting cocaine into your hands while providing excellent operating conditions and a cool buzz probably is not so great for your circulation. Cocaine is known to provoke long-standing vasoconstriction in a manner that injected epinephrine just doesn't. So let's ask the real question. The total number of cases of digital ischemia after someone used lidocaine with or without epinephrine is... Zero. That's it. And considering that we've been doing digital blocks for decades with and without epinephrine, we've got a fairly big denominator there. If you use epinephrine in digital blocks, you can expect to see decreased bleeding, decreased need for additional injections, longer lasting pain relief, and importantly, 
no difference in adverse outcomes. But there are some things that are bad for fingers and can lead to ischemia. Finger tourniquets and hot soaks are largely a thing of the past and were notorious amongst hand surgeons for causing mechanical and thermal injury as well as arterial thrombosis. Circumferential injection is theoretically a concern as there could be a pressure effect on the small vessels provoking ischemia. Like most things, patient selection is important, and if the patient has several other risk factors for vasospasm or vasculopathy, it may be wise, despite the absence of proven harm, to avoid the transient reduction in digital blood flow. So there you have it. Despite the lore and dogma that many of us are taught about fingers and end arteries and ischemia, there's actually nothing there, apart from some interesting epidemiologic history. Epinephrine does not cause harm when used in local anesthetic solutions for digital blocks. We can consider that myth busted.